What's going on traders? Andrew O'Connell here with Pristine Capital coming at you with yet another market recap video. It is March 14th, 2022. Let's talk about the price action in the indices today. Yet another down day in the market. We'll talk about what happened today. We'll talk about some of my trades for today. Before we do that, quick risk disclaimer, nothing in this video should be construed as investment advice or recommendations. Please follow your own trading plan and your own risk parameters. And last but certainly not least, do not YOLO your entire account to any one of my trades or anyone's trades for that matter. Oh my gosh, what a day. Let's talk about these box scores. We have the S&P 500 finishing down 0.73%. NASDAQ QQQ finishing down 1.92%. IWM small caps finishing down 2.04%. Dogs of the Dow somehow eked out a positive return up 0.02%. And we have the ARK Innovation ETF got absolutely slaughtered down almost six percent you can see almost all of the indices closed at the bottom end of their daily range we had volatility increasing in all of the indices what i will say is that breadth was pretty mixed for a down day in the market where the nasdaq for instance was down almost two percent i'm actually kind of surprised that the breadth on the spy for instance was pretty close to even at 45 percent so we've been talking about this the last couple of weeks, how there is just a barrage of bad news after bad news. And then that bad news turns into even more bad news. And it really just continues to compound. There's so many reasons to be negative on this market. Take a look at this heat map. Pretty much all of these mega cap tech stocks got absolutely blasted today. And today the major headline was that the Chinese had, I believe it was 13 airplanes that they flew into the Taiwan airspace. So now suddenly this raises the question, we had that incursion into Taiwan. Could China end up invading Taiwan and trying to annex it similar to what Russia is doing in Ukraine? It is certainly a possibility. Now, in addition, there's also this new narrative that the Chinese are helping the Russians. So let's think about that. If the Chinese are helping the Russians, well, what did we do to the Russians when they went into Ukraine? Well, we sanctioned them and basically you know, removed them from the monetary system, removed them from SWIFT. We banned a lot of imports from Russia. Now imagine if we find out China is helping Russia and or that China is invading Taiwan. Could the United States actually do the same thing to China? Could we say, hey, we're banning all imports from China? We could do it, but it almost seems like that would be a death wish because imagine all the things we import from China. Imagine how much more expensive all these goods we take for granted would get. And imagine what that would do to our inflation numbers. And imagine what that higher inflation would do to Fed policy. So it's really like a big ripple effect and it's not like it is a certainty that any of this is going to come to fruition, but suddenly the market has to prepare for the what if scenario that it does. So you can see we had mega cap tech very weak. We had financial services a little bit stronger today. We had healthcare pretty strong. Energy actually took a back seat today. Crude oil actually declined for another day, which was good because the last thing that we want is energy prices just continuing to spiral out of control. So take a look at this. The gold miners, which everyone was panicking into last week, those were down 4.07%. Tan solar energy stocks down 6.15%. This was a group that I actually wanted to allocate to, but I sort of missed the trade. So I always love to see that. Uh, of course, the XLE energy ETF is down 2.99%. So even the sectors, again, this, this list, it's always going to be ranked in terms of momentum for you. So even the most high momentum sectors got taken to the woodshed. And then look at everything else. K-Web was down 11.71%. The ARK Innovation ETF down almost six. Crazy stuff, right? Let's take a look at this K-Web ETF. And again, this is due to the fact that, you know, we pretty much banned like the trading of the Russian ETF. Like this is RSX. This is the Russian ETF. Look at what this thing did. And I'm pretty sure it's getting like delisted essentially. So all the investors that are currently in K-Web, they are suddenly, you know, the market is pricing in a good chance that something similar happens to these Chinese equities. 
So again, this just cre creates an environment of instability. Look at the high volume on this candle. So there was a big exodus from this fund. And to be honest, there's there's been an exodus from this thing ever since Russia invaded Ukraine. It's almost like investors really sniff this out. So I think the situation with KWeb is pretty interesting. I've gotten a few questions about this one. So it's a double-edged sword. If China, if it does not get delisted, if these tensions sort of simmer down, etc., could this ETF double or triple? It absolutely could. Could this ETF go to zero if the Chinese make an advance in Taiwan and or are helping the Russians? Certainly could. So that's really the risk that you're facing here. It's almost like an options contract rather than an equity at this point. So yeah, KWeb got absolutely crushed. Take a look at the ARK Innovation ETF. Oh my gosh, down to $52.29. There's this funny headline. The CNBC guys, a lot of times, like I'm not sure if they're like compromised or if they are actually like even trying to have retail investors make any money. But one of the guys, Pete Nigerian, he came on and he said, I'm shorting ARK here and I'm shorting ARK G. And it's so funny because look how far this thing has come. It's retraced all of the post-pandemic gains so yeah this is definitely pricing in a lot of downside that is for sure let's take a look at treasuries because there is a significant movement going on there as well take a look at these 10-year treasury futures these got absolutely obliterated today and this made a 1.29 atr move the atr measures the average size of this candle so the average daily range so let's say for instance like apple let's say like it opened at 95 bucks it went all the way up to 100 bucks and closed at 97.50 the range for that day would be the close of or the uh, the high of the day which is 100 minus the low of the day which is 95 which would be five bucks this moved a full 1.27 ATRs to the downside. So very big move. And just for illustration here, look at what's going on with these treasury yields. The 10 year yield is now at two spot one four and the two year yield is now at one spot eight five nine. So the yield curve is very close to inverting at this point. And yeah, this of course is not good for the NASDAQ. It's not good for the ARK Innovation stocks. It's just not what we are looking for. Let's take a quick look at the VIX. The VIX is just stubbornly bid above 30. Eventually the VIX is gonna go below 30 and below 27. And I think that'll be the period where like it's suddenly safe to get back into the market. That'll likely coincide with some sort of resolution on whether it's this conflict going on in Ukraine and Russia, maybe some easier monetary policy, whatever. But for now, we are just still in this really rough environment. I see this little headline, Coop, now negative 26% post-market. I'm pretty sure Coop is software beat on their results. I just want to check this out. Oh my gosh, yeah, this thing is also getting obliterated. Jeez, yeah, and this one, I'm pretty sure they raised their guidance as well. What the heck? These are earnings... Yeah, they beat on their EPS and they also beat on their sales. I'm not too sure about their guidance. I'm assuming their guidance was weak or everyone's just like super panicked and capitulating at this point. So yeah, not all that much in the way of good news for the market style factors we had. What did we have? So we had defensives actually positive. And then these international, like international momentum, international value were also positive. And then the big losers, momentum, growth, and high beta got absolutely smoked. Keep in mind, we have our Fed Wednesday meeting coming up. It is this Wednesday at two o'clock and Powell is gonna weigh in on interest rates. They're likely gonna hike interest rates by 25 basis points. And they're also going to talk about the potential balance sheet unwind. So a lot going on on Wednesday. Is there a lot to do before Wednesday? No, not really. So I just honestly haven't been trading all that much. My trend model is at a negative one. And we're just in such an environment of uncertainty that it seems like, to be honest, one of the best things to do is just be a little bit more still 
not really do as much. Let's take a look at this, these options. A ton of SPY puts going up. So investors, they're getting their hedges up. For Tesla, it's a bit of a mix. Qs, we're seeing lots of puts going up. This is the same story that we've been seeing for quite a while now. In terms of my trades for today, I did not do a whole lot, but I did close out these Apple calls. So Apple, unfortunately, this one really got hit today. I had some high hopes for Apple. I had these April <clears throat> 170 calls. I had to close these out for 71 cents. I had paid 485. I put here, this name is getting crushed off the fact that it'll likely become entangled in any US slash China conflict as a result of the Chinese helping the Russians. In this one, there was a headline that because of COVID, <clears throat> uh, I believe it was like an Apple supplier had to shut down their plant, at least temporarily. But make no mistake about it. I honestly think, you know, this could end up being sort of like a casualty of the situation. And Apple, you can see, took out this downside VPOC and really just kept going. So yeah, I want to make sure, and this is something that I definitely could have been better at in this sequence. When I'm presented with new information, I want to make sure that I'm updating my, you know, ver latest version of reality. Essentially, like, as I get new information, my view on the risk reward landscape is going to change. And as that changes, I need to make sure that I'm changing my portfolio. So yeah, I had to make that adjustment. Other than that, no trades for me. So yeah, tomorrow, like I said, is tomorrow likely going to be a nothing burger? Probably. I mean, unless we get some new juicy headlines on Russia and Ukraine, I doubt there's going to be too many investors that are going, all right, time to put all this capital to work the day before Fed Wednesday. So yeah, as always, make sure you're being patient. Stay safe out there and I will see you all tomorrow.